Hello everyone. This video I think is the fourth or fifth in the series. Can't believe I've got that many already. This is going to deal with order fulfillment and purchase orders. This is the third time that I've attempted to make this video. The first one just wasn't very good. I felt clunky because I haven't um, done a lot of this stuff for a very long time. I was remembering or trying to remember how it worked and I just didn't like it so I deleted it. Then I said okay let's make a new one. Got about halfway through it and then I found some bugs and some problems so I had to stop go fix those. Now I think I've uh, pretty much got it working. We'll see if we make it through to the end then yay if not we'll be attempt number four in the future. So here we go. So what do you do when someone places an order and you have to fulfill it? Well, go over here to sales and click on orders. And by now you're used to these types of lists. You've got your orders. They're ordered by date, newest on top. All right. You have your various statuses, um, the payment method, whether or not it needs an FFL and whether or not you've received it. Some of these statuses get flipped on for you automatically. Some of them you have to do with, with these up here or with the um, order edit screen. You already know what these are. With selected, obviously, you've got things that you can do to a bulk selection of orders. Only changing the statuses right now. You have your filter. It's very basic, but it gets you, you know, what you're looking for. There's not a whole lot more you would need in a filter, I don't think. But hopefully you're going to have lots of orders here and you need to find the one you're looking for. So there you go. All right, so um, I've done three test orders, two with credit cards, one with a check. Um, and I'm going to try to demo the various um, aspects of order fulfillment. But just to um, a little preface, typically, unless you're set up with drop shipping with your distributor, here's the flow. Someone places an order on your website, you then have to go look at that order, go find who has the products that they're looking for in stock, order them, they will come to you, you will unbox that, repackage it up for the customer, and ship, put a label on it, and ship it off to them. So that process could take, you know, some time. If you're ordering, you know, a bunch of stuff from your supplier they may box it all up into one box and you have to unbox it find you know who ordered this and who ordered that and and reassemble and repackage you may have to pull from two or three different suppliers just to fulfill one order because by the time you got around to uh, doing your order fulfillment for the customer for your customer the supplier sold out and you got to go find it from someone else um, and that's very doable. Um, it's just, it's a process, so you have to understand that. Now, some suppliers have drop shipping. This system is set up to work with Xanders right now, and that's it. And it's very experimental. It's very new. Um, so I'm sure it's, you know, some things that need to be done with it. And I'll, I'll demo it a little bit um, here. Um, and it may crash and burn because I haven't, I haven't tried it. Um, since I wrote it two or three months ago, but I mean all things considered it it should be okay, but we'll see um, so uh, Now that that's out of the way Here's your list of orders so you pick one you can do your newest one or your oldest one. It, it's entirely up to you um, So let's just go here and do the oldest one So now when you first open an order for the very first time all of these different sections are opened up for you and you may want to just get all that clutter out of your way. So just come over here and click Collapse All, and that sh scrunches them all down. If you want to open them all up again, just hit that, and it will come back. And it remembers. It's like you can come back, you know, go somewhere else, come back, come back here. And it remembers your last state um, for this particular browser. If you go get on another computer, it's not going to re remember it. It's saved on the computer, not on the server. Um, so this first box here is just your basic order info. You can flip statuses. 
um, if they've you know sent you the FFL you can mark it you can change billing info and shipping info and FFL info if needed and save that okay if they uploaded supporting documentations when they um, checked out it'll be here if you've got some that you need attached to attach to the order you can click on that and upload up to four files for the order you know driver's licenses or identification papers or whatever you may need okay order notes this is for your use only it doesn't get printed anywhere it doesn't um, it's not public facing at all some um, messages from for example the um, Xander's drop shipping if there was a problem with one of the items or whatnot it'll throw a a note in here for you it's just some place for you know it, it to be kept um, for your reference and then it's nice because you can you know go down underneath it and add your own notes regarding it you know however you want to do I mean I could put I could put you know a API transaction log thing down here like this but you can't edit it you can't uh, attach your own notes to it so I thought this would be a per perfect place for that we may revisit that later but for now it's putting it will put any uh, messages that you need to know about in here just be careful that you don't accidentally delete them all right so we'll skip over um, these for now because this is the meat and potatoes of it payments and refunds since this was a credit card order the payment will show up here if this were a check order there'd be nothing here because you haven't received the payment yet and when you do receive it uh, you can enter it we've got another order that's a check order and I'll demo that but um, if you need to issue a refund um, for any reason you click on that since this was a credit card order you'll probably want to refund it to their credit card you should only be able to choose the card that they purchased it with you can't refund it to a different card you can't uh, it has to go back on the same card if you want to send them a check you can do that if they come into the store to get their refund you can give them cash it's entirely up to you this just merely records it the credit card transaction however though um, will put the the money whatever you put in here back on their card and you can't total the total of all refunds can't exceed the order total so you can refund them hundred dollars now and then you can do hundred and fifty eight twenty five again later if you want but it cannot exceed the order total combined of all refunds you can combine credit card check and cash combined they can't exceed the order total if you need to flip the order status after you've processed the refund uh, you can do that here and click process and it will change the order's status accordingly okay um, this is all payments and all refunds between you and the customer this has nothing to do with distributors or anything it's between you and the customer that's it um, returns there's nothing to do here because we haven't shipped any items but once you've shipped items if they say they want to return something the process that you do is entirely up to you if you don't want to mess with RMAs then you just you know don't deal with don't do it um, but once a shipment has been made and, and we'll demo this here in a bit uh, you can create a new RMA and it'll give you a number if you've never done it before the number will be one it starts at one you give them that RMA typically what people um, what uh, companies tell people to do is write the RMA number on the outside of the box what you do is entirely up to you you can have them write them down on a piece of paper and put it inside the box you can you know whatever I you know it's, it's entirely up to you that none of this is written in stone um, and then once you get it you can um, flip the status of the RMA and then issue them their refund accordingly um, however you want to do that but if you don't want to mess with RMAs you absolutely don't have to right now there's no way to search for an RMA I need to see how popular this is going to be and, and what's needed but for now you can create them you might have them put the order number on the box instead of the RMA number or both because you can find the order and then you can find the the return that you know that you're waiting on um, but right now you can't just look up an RMA number like there's no RMAs section over here and I probably need to do that but I'm waiting to see if it's needed first there's so many other things that I want to get done 
transaction log, this is all payments and refunds. Um, typically, this is credit card uh, data. I think maybe um, check uh, transactions would go down here as well. I, I'm not sure. We can try that here in a minute and see. But again, this has nothing to do with distributors. This is just between you and your customer. This is the raw credit card processor um, response. This is basically just for your reference. You can't really use it. If you need to go to your credit card processor's website and look something up, here's the transaction ID that you can find it. Um, the raw response, so if there's a problems or whatever, you could send that to tech support so that they could um, you know, double check or compare but this is just basic information, um, FYI stuff, all right? So now um, that all that uh, overview is covered, um, here is, you know, the meat and potatoes of it. Here is the things that were ordered on this order. This is what the customer ordered. These are the SKUs for the item at the time they ordered it. This doesn't mean that you have to ship these. Um, I mean, you have to ship them these items, but it doesn't have to be, you know, this one from Xander's and this one from Xander's and this one from Xander's, as long as it's the same item. It, it doesn't matter. They don't care. They'll probably don't even care about this, you know. They just want their their product, and they just want it, you know, they want what they ordered, and they want it in a timely manner, right? So um, this is how we do this. This is how much they ordered, the status of the ordered product new because you haven't done anything with it yet the price you charge them the total so if this was two this would be double and so forth once a PO has been created a link here to go to the print view of it will show up the PO number will show up and it's clickable alright so now we need to fulfill this order so we need to do a purchase order and well, we need to know who has this stuff right so we click on check inventories and every distributor that you have that has at least one of these items is going to show up here all right the very first one is always going to be for on hand stuff so if you've got inventory and and you have one or more of these and you want to use your in stock inventory you would just select it put the quantity that you pulled from your shelf and click pull from stock all right the pulled there's a little note up here about what this means. Basically, if you remember on the products video, um, there's a setting for each product called subtract from stock, which means if you have it in stock and you have that turned on and someone orders it, it will it will decrease your on-hand quantity by that many or by as many as it can so that um, it, it accurately reflects what you have on hand because if someone ordered it even though you haven't boxed it up and pulled it off the shelf yet it needs to be earmarked so um, if you have that turned on and that happened that would this quantity right here is how much it deducted from your on hand quantity it, it doesn't um, have anything to do with this uh, at all so um, the, the this explains that in a little more detail. I'm not going to read that to you, but you can figure that out. If you still have questions, you let me know. But we don't have any of these on hand, so we're not going to worry about this. We have to order them. Now, this particular order, Xander's is the only one that has everything. They're the only one that has anything, it looks like. Um, so uh, we need to order them. Now, Xander's does offer drop shipping it's called direct ship and you need to get set up with them if you want to do it and it's a bit of a process but once you do um, I think it'd be fairly beneficial because you don't ever have to touch the product they ship the um, non FFL the non firearms stuff straight to the customer they ship the FFL required stuff firearms to the FFL that the customer chose they do it for you you don't have to touch it. You don't have to enter the stuff in your logbook. You don't have to unpackage, inspect, repackage, and reship. Um, it's done for you, and it's kind of a good deal. Um, the thing of it is, is they set you up. You've got three different accounts. If you want to do firearms and non-firearms, you're going to have three different sets of credentials with them that associates with three different accounts, one being the firearms account, one being the non-firearms account and one being your store account which means you can order stuff and just have it shipped to your store 
for either your own purposes or to repackage and ship to a customer. So if you wanted to do that here and you've got everything set up over here under your vendor APIs and you've got all your credentials in there and whatnot, you can do that. You could select all of the non-FFL required items and you can come over here and drop ship and you say drop ship non-FFL items and it will send that order to Xander's. They will charge your account whether you've got them with ACH or terms or credit card, however you've got it worked out with them. Um, they will box it up and ship it out and charge you accordingly, shipping and, and whatnot. Then you'd have to come back here and, and do it again for the for the FFL items and say drop ship FFL items. Okay. If you didn't want to drop ship it and you just want to order it all to your store, you can do that. You can select all of them and say order and ship to store and it will send the order to Xander's. They will charge you accordingly. They'll box everything up and ship it to you. Then you would need to unpackage it, um, inspect it, repackage it up and, and ship it off to your customer. Um, so, you know, well, however you want to do that. Again, th this is rather experimental in this system. I've tested it on their test server, and this is why I've started with Xander's, because none of the others offer a testing server for drop shipping. It's, you know, get it right and hope it's right and, and, and do it on the live site. So, um, Lipsy's has a way for you to order to store. They don't offer drop ship, and they don't have a testing server. So if you're, if you, if you got an order come in and Lipsy's has it you, and you've got credentials, just your regular import credentials, there's no separate credentials with Lipsy's for, for direct ordering, this will be available to you. Know that if you're on testing mode, all right, it will add um, just testing, please disregard or something like that to the comments that go to your rep. You're going to want to call them, call your rep, and let them know that you're going to do some testing to disregard any orders that come through with test in the comments or just testing or whatever, and make sure it's okay with them. My Lipsy's rep is fine with it. Yours may not be, but call ahead and let them know that if they see that, that you're just testing this system and, and you don't actually want to order it, okay? That's, that's kind of important because if they don't know that or they don't understand they'll order it for you and you'll end up getting it okay so you can do that with ellipses just understand you know what it means to test xander's has a full-blown testing server so you can do whatever you want with xander's as long as you got test mode on you're not going to get you know you're not going to have products show up um the nice thing about um ordering to store let's say you like this backpack and you think well that's pretty neat well, they've already they've ordered one. They've only got three. I'd like to add, you know, I'd like to have a couple for my store. So you can order, you can order more than the customer ordered. Don't drop ship it to them because they'll end up getting them. Order them to your store. You'll get all three of them. You'll have to reship the one to your customer and then put the other two on your shelves. So this doesn't have to be the quantity that is that is ordered you can order more for your own purposes just know that you if you're doing the automatic payment stuff um, if you say drop ship it your customers gonna get those and they didn't pay for it so be aware all right um, I'm gonna be brave here and I'm going to um, or now something I need to to and this may be something I need to update I believe Xander's has stopped drop shipping ammunition to California the reason this says FFL required for a box of bullets is because I was testing shipping to California okay and California passed a new law that says if you're shipping ammunition to California you have to ship it to an FFL Xander's was doing that for a while, and I think they stopped. I'll have to dig up my email or contact my rep to see. And I believe they've stopped shipping, drop shipping ammunition to California altogether. For now, you're going to have to know that. If you see FFL required on a box of ammunition, chances are it's because they're wanting it shipped to California, and you're not going to want to select drop ship. I mean, you can do it, but it'll probably fail with an error. Um, going to Xander's. So um, f 
you know, for now, let's just do the backpack and we'll say drop ship uh, non FFL items. Now it's talking to Xanders, and like I said, I haven't done this in a few weeks, so it might error out, and all of this is for naught. Nope. PO has been processed. Um, you still have these left to order. Notice the backpack's not here anymore. Okay, these are just what you need to order now. You can come down here. You've got um, a backpack ordered with Xander Sporting Goods. Um, you can come up here. You've got a PO now for this item. If you click on it, you'll get the printable version of it. Okay. Um, you can come down here and click edit and it will take you to the purchase order edit screen where you can change the status. Notice it's been flipped to ordered for you. This is the order number that came from Xander's. All right. So if you had to reference Xander's, if you had to call them to check on something, this is the number you'd give them. All right. You don't have to print anything. You don't have to send this to them because it sent it to Xander's on your behalf. Okay. This, this product is on order. And it's going to get shipped um, to this person for you. Now, it's not going to do it. I'm on testing mode. So, um, but it worked. There was no errors. And, um, and that's that. So, notice the status here now is partially ordered because we only ordered one product. Um, we haven't ordered the others, so we can come down here and we still need to order these two things so we can check inventories. We know Xander's is the only one that has it. This is, um, ammunition that we can't drop ship. I mean, we can try it and see what happens. It may work. It may not work. I, I don't really know. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to try it. So just for, you know, poops and giggles, let's say, well, we want to order these to the store and then we'll reship them. So you can come over here and you can say order and ship to store. This will place the order with Xander's and it will show up to your store. They will not ship it for you. Okay. So now there's no more things we need to order. Ordered items. We've got these two on purchase order number two. We've got this on purchase order number one. We can see that here as well. Here are the two things that we just ordered. We got a new supplier order number from Xander's. Okay, um, and if we come back to the orders, it is now ordered. All things that were on the order have been ordered, <clears throat> and um, and that's that's just that simple with Sanders um, direct ship and direct ordering. Um, you can do kind of the same thing with Lipsy's, but it just comes to your store. Now for this order, there obviously was no FFL required for this order. All right, so let's see what we got. We've got, I don't know what that is, a cleaning mat, um, some hearing protection, and looks like some parts. Um, so we'll come down here and we'll check inventories and we'll see what we got. All right, so um, Xander's has everything but this. Gun accessory supply has them all. So now this is where you decide how you think you want to do this. I mean, you could drop ship these two items to your customer, you're going to pay shipping on that. And then you'd still have to order this to your store, turn around and ship it out. If it were me, I would just order all three of these from gun accessory supply. They don't offer drop shipping and they don't offer, um, electronic ordering. So the only thing you can do with them is create a PO. Okay. And you create the PO that says it's been processed. You come over here, nothing's left to order. Everything's on purchase order number three. All right. Come over here, you can look at it. And what you're going to have to do, if you want to put some notes to your sales rep, you enter them here, save, and then you print. You can either, then you can fax it to them, you can scan it and email it to them, you can just call them up and say, hey, I want to order these things, whatnot. If they give you an order number, you can put it in here and click save, flip the status to something else if you want or whatever, but this is a manual purchase order and you're going to have to make sure these get ordered, um, you know, because it wasn't done automatically. All right. So notice now that, that, um, it says ordered 
oh, this is purchase orders. If you come over here to orders, um, it's ordered, it's unpaid because the payment was check. So we can come over here and there's no payments because it was paid by check. So let's say, okay, they, I did this backwards. You would want to receive the payment, obviously, <clears throat> excuse me, before you ship it. But I was demoing, uh, or before you order it, I was demoing, you know, how to, to do a manual purchase order. But to, let's say that, you know, we got the check. It came in. I mean, if, <clears throat> if you wanted to process, if they called and said, hey, I don't, I forgot to send that check. I'm sorry. Here, let, just let me pay with a credit card. Well, you can do that, and you can take the amount and, and put in all the information while you've got them on the phone and hit process payment. And if it goes through, then then it's done. Um, and then you could change the, 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 the status if you want. All right. Um, but a check, let's say you got the check. The check came in. It was check number 1525. And you say process payment. All right. Now it'll refresh. <clears throat> and you've got your payment in here. All right, no refunds because uh, you know that you just got it, and uh, and that's that. So now, fast forward, you know, five six days, whatever it takes for you to get this stuff in from Gun Accessory Supply. All right, so you've got it in. Now you need to ship it. Okay, if you're going to print labels <clears throat> from your um, site using Easy Post um, and QZ Tray, um, you would come here. All right, and you create a new shipment, and there's your new shipment. It's shipment number one, no packages, not shipped. That's the status. Open that up, and you have to put a package. Each shipment has at least one package. You can have multiple package shipments. You can have multiple shipments per order, and however, however you need to do to get it done, you can do it. So you click new package, and here's the new package screen. So you've got your box. You got to measure it. Every shipping supplier needs to know the dimensions and I, you know, I'm just going to be making this up. So I'm going to say it's a 16 by uh, 16 by, uh, I don't know, 10. And then we're going to say it weighs five pounds. Now, nothing in here needs a signature. <clears throat> it's not ammunition. So there's no reason to check all this. Check off which things you're putting in the box. In this case, it's all of them. And you say, add to package. All right. So here's your shipment. Here's your package. It has three items. Okay. If you need to, if you want to put in a packing slip, you can do this, which is just the packing slip for this package. <clears throat> if you had multiple packages, you could do this and it would do a, a packing slip for everything. Okay. Pick list is, um, if this is a really long order or however you want to, um, do your process, if you're, you know, if you've got a bunch of boxes that comes in from a bunch of suppliers and you need to figure out what goes where the pick lists are handy it's just a um, it's just a list with the order number and the things and the quantities and a place for you to put a check box next to you know okay we've pulled this these items for this order or mark them out or whatever and then move them on down the line for whoever's you know doing the next process or whatever it's just basically something that I thought would be a handy tool you may or may not need it but that's what that is. Um, the packing slip. Um, this goes in the box, you know. Um, it's not an invoice. It's just this is what, you know, supposed to be in the box. Okay. So um, I'm going to turn on my printer. And I know that you can't see this, but I, I, want, I don't want it to cause an error when I go print this. Um, so if you need to remove stuff, you select them and say remove items. If you want to delete the whole package and start over, you do that. Okay. But when you're ready to print your label and ship it, you click the ship it. All right. This is where it's going. Okay. This is what's in the box. Double check to make sure that the, the um, shipping method you choose allows the items that you're going to ship. This is what the customer chose. You don't have to use that if you don't want to. You can pick anything in here because this is what you've told your system that that you're using. Um, might as well just leave it there for demo purposes. And then click purchase label. Now, this is the only time you will get billed from EasyPost. 
if you're not on testing mode and you click purchase label, you're going to get charged three cents. But since we're on testing mode, you can do this as many times as you want. The labels aren't valid. They say sample or something like that all the way across the front of them in a watermark. You can't use them. And, but this is the only time you would ever be charged by Easy Post. So I'm going to go ahead and purchase the label. And just so you can see the process. And it's done. Now, I, it didn't print. It doesn't print automatically. You come over here and you can print the label. I'm not going to do it because I don't want to waste the paper, but there's the tracking number that came back from Easy Post. And um, when you click ship it, it sends an email to your customer that says, hey, your order has been shipped. You should be, it should be arriving shortly. Here's the tracking number with a link that they can click to, to go there and view the tracking information. If this was a multi-package shipment, the master tracking number would be the one assigned to the entire shipment and then I believe depending on the, the shipping provider they may put different tracking numbers for each package. Here's my shipping notice. This is what it looks like uh, going to the customer. Um, since it's in test mode you get this header up here but this is what it would look like. It'll have your logo up here and whatnot and this is what it looks like when you ship something and uh, this is what the customer gets. Okay. Now, that pretty much covers shipping. Now that you've actually shipped something, all right, you can do returns. Now, you, like I said, you don't have to do the RMA system, um, but a lot of pe places do, and I understand why, especially if you're doing a lot of business. You've got to be able to track these returns. So let's say they wanted to return something. You say new RMA. And there it is, it's created RMA number one, it starts at one, okay? And then you can put in the items that they say they are returning. Let's say this doesn't work for them or whatever, so they don't want that anymore, so they, they're sending it back, okay? And that's basically all there is to it. You're waiting um, for this to come in, okay? If they call up and say, you know what, never mind, I'm, I'm not going to return it, I'm going to keep it, well, then you can just delete the whole RMA if you want the next one generated will be number two. I mean, it, it doesn't reuse the numbers. Um, or if you, if they decided they wanted, you know, oh, you know what? I really don't want that mat either. Okay. All right. So now RMA number one is associated with these two items. Uh, that was an accident. I didn't need that on there. So select the item and hit remove. Okay. Confirm it. And then that's it. So when it comes and you've got it, you issue them their refund, okay? Their refund of, uh, well, I should probably put the price on here, shouldn't I? We got it up here, $13.99, okay? So we come up here and we say, okay, I'm going to refund them by check, $13.99, and I'm sending them check number $52.50. And process is... Uh, you know, processing return or or whatever you want to do. Uh, whoops, except for click off the screen. Uh, processing return. There it goes. Your refund will show up here. Let's see if it's in the transaction log. There's your transactions. There's no responses or transaction IDs because they were check transactions, so there's nothing like that, but there's your transaction log. <clears throat> okay. And then you can come over here, and once it's come in, then you can come over here and you can f flip it to, you know, if they didn't return something or they didn't return all of it, you can select the status for your RMA process. You can put some notes in here. Items returned, you know, everything is okay. Save it. And that's that. Items return one, total RMA is one. If you need to come back and review, you can uh, come back and review the notes if you want. And you can still delete it though after it's been processed. There's nothing There's nothing that, that says that you can't do that. You know, we can delete it. Um, but, you know, that's up to you if you want to do that, okay? <clears throat> so that's pretty much that in a nutshell.
um, how you do about notice this payment status is partially refunded because we didn't refund the total amount and we made this processing return ourselves we might want to change that to um, completed there we go this order has a lot of stuff on it um, I just wanted a big order to to demo this um, something like this will have several suppliers if you've got several suppliers in your list of suppliers um, Lipsy's has every th nothing except for this rifle Xander's has just these two things and gun accessory supply doesn't sell firearms so they've got everything else this is a great example of an order where you're going to need to compile it looks like from three different um, suppliers so Lipsy's is the only one that sells this rifle so you'll have to order it from them you have no choice again Lipsy's will let you order and ship to store if you're on testing mode make sure that you, they understand that you really don't want it you can put notes to your sales rep um, in here and it will get sent when you do this order um, if you do this here I'm not going to do that I'm just going to do create PO and that will create the PO for that it removes it from the need to order list we'll come back down here check inventories again um, gun accessory supply has everything but the receiver they don't sell receivers so I'll just get it from Xander's now let's check the price of the ammo they don't there's three dollars from Xander's it's three dollars from gun accessory supply I might as well just order it from gun accessory supply Xander's is going to charge me shipping same amount of shipping regardless so we'll create that PO we could order and have it shipped to store if we want um, dealing with Xander's it might be better to do that but just for demonstration purposes I'm going to create a PO we still need to order these things we come back and check inventories now Xander still has that but we're not going to order it from them and we're going to order everything else from gun accessory supply and we'll create the PO okay now everything's been ordered it's been ordered on three different POs none of these were automatically sent so we still have to go to our purchase orders and we find them we print them we call our rep we fax it to them whatever we got to do and um, now this may be something that I need to revisit but when you when you um, do a PO here it automatically flips it to ordered even though you still have to go order it I don't know what other status we can make that it might be it might behoove us to to do those um, called entered or something so that we know we still need to order them um, but you're gonna have to uh, you're gonna have to to work that out I, I probably will change that from ordered to entered um, so that you can come to this screen and see okay these are entered I still need to call the the distributor or and order them or fax this over or, or whatever um, so that's I think that's just about it I mean we covered purchase orders. if you want to create a new purchase order outside of the orders um, screen you just come over here and click new and you, you have to choose the supplier that you're using before I do that though I'm going to come over here and find a product so that I can show you how this works um, this is for Xander's here's MGE let's do that one MGE um, the model number is CH starts with CHA 93 okay so when you're doing manual purchase orders you first you choose who you're doing it with and you create the PO all right and notice you can't delete these because they were automatically ch um, generated they're attached to an order there's no way to delete them um, and we may need to revisit that too but it gets real messy when you start um, doing that um, so 
here is our new purchase order. We click edit and um, we can put in an order number if they give it to us and whatnot. But remember, you've got hundreds of thousands of products from various suppliers and, and MGE probably has tens of thousands of, of products. So having a list of products, a drop down list, if you thought the categories list was big, oh my gosh, the, the, the products would be huge. So, you know, we put in how many we want and then we start typing either the item number or the UPC. So the item number here was CHA93. So CHA93 and then it comes up with everything from MGE that's whose item number starts with CHA93. Okay. And you can do this if you click it, it will fill the rest of the form in for you. Um Let's see, CHA9, okay, so UPC starts with 67895, so if if we didn't have the model number, we just had the UPC, 67895, okay, that really comes up with a lot more. A lot more things in the UPC start with 67895 than do model numbers starting with whatever that was, so you... You find the, the thing you're looking for, and the more you type, the more it filters it down, see, and then you can choose the what, what you want, your quantity, it updates it for you, and then you can add another product, or you can delete products. Then once you're done, you save it, print it, scan it, fax it, whatever you got to do to get it to your MGE sales rep. Um, so that's, uh, I'm playing with my microphone. I don't know what I did. Um, sorry about that. Hopefully you can still hear me. Um, and, and then that's how you, that's how you do manual purchase orders. Put in your notes if you want before it's printed. These are for internal use. It, it, it's just for you to, uh, Maybe leave notes to the next person that's going to be viewing this screen or notes to your future self. I, I talk to my future self all the time. Too bad we can't talk to our past selves, right? <laughs> so so that's that. I'm going to delete it. Now, when you delete um, a purchase order, it comes up with this. Um, you know, <clears throat> do you want to flip the, um, all? you know, this doesn't have any items on it, but if it did, do you want to change their status back to new, as in not ordered, as in, uh, you know, like it was when the order was placed? Um, <clears throat> assuming this is attached to an order, if it's not attached to an order, it doesn't matter. Typically, you'd probably want to do that right there. It doesn't matter for this one. So there. If this, if this, and, and I don't know, you might not, because you can't delete, <clears throat> you can't delete a um, purchase order attached to an order. So that might be, um, that might not even be necessary. See, these videos lead me down these rabbit holes of, do I really need to put that button on there or not? Because it seemed like a good thing to do at the time, but maybe it's not because you can't delete these. So why would it even matter? I don't know. Time will tell. That that might go away, just uh, FYI. Um, so I think that covers just about everything with orders and how you process them, how you do your shipments and payments and refunds and returns and what the transaction log is and what this screen is. And um, so I'm going to wrap it up. It's a 40 going on 45 minutes that's a pretty long video but there's a lot to cover here if you have any questions you know how to reach me and um, I appreciate you trying out the product and using it and everyone is um, just giving me great suggestions and finding these bugs and and um, I really think this is going to be a fantastic product I, I think it already is I think it's it's going to be um, a whole lot better in time all right so thank you for watching and I'm going to wrap it up. You guys have a great day.